those of you um, uh, who didn't put your hand up, either I, I'm going to either assume that you haven't had that life experience or you've not actually recognised that you've made perhaps some bad decisions in your life, uh, some decisions that didn't go so well. Um, that's the thing about those decisions where sometimes you can laugh at them and you go, it seemed like a good idea at the time. And there are other times when you look at a decision that you made and you go, well, actually, this was a really well thought out decision. You look at the way you considered it, you look, weighed up the circumstances, and then afterwards, you wonder what happened. You made a well informed choice, so you thought. You made the decision that looked the best in and that it was the right thing to do. As far as you knew, it was the right thing to do. In fact, as far as you knew, this decision that you were going to make was actually going to help people, was actually going to serve people. But then, after the decision, you look back and go, how could I have been so wrong? You might have had that happen. There are other decisions that we make, though, where we don't actually know what could have turned out better, or we don't know what could have turned out worse. We don't know sometimes what could have happened, those sliding doors kind of moments. I've had that happen in my life where I keep on trying to learn, I keep on trying to grow, I keep on trying to learn to be a better husband, a better father, a better pastor, but still I make decisions where even with all the learning I try and make, they don't quite turn out as well as what we hope. Just a few examples that might have happened um, or that you might know of someone that this has happened to. Uh, just think of your regular 16-year-old who thinks they've met the love of their life, who thinks that they're going to marry this person. They've got all the wisdom that they could possibly have to make this decision in, with their life experience. But mum and dad are going, uh-uh. Mum and dad are going, no, this is not the way we want things to turn out. We've had job opportunities, some of us, where we've gone and taken what appears to be the perfect job and then we start the supposed perfect job and we get to our first day of work and we realise that the culture at work is just absolutely terrible. We're like, okay, the pay is nice, but I'm not sure if they could pay me enough to be here. There are other decisions that we perhaps missed. We might see someone on the street perhaps who needs some help. And we choose not to help them, or we do choose to help them. And you hear stories like this from time to time where someone helps someone on the street and then that person on the street goes on to, because someone believed in them enough to help them, and that person goes on to make something amazing out of their life. And sometimes I wonder what opportunities we miss and things like that. Here's a um, situation uh, that I'm going to assume that none of you have had to deal with. Um, I know at least the women have not had to deal with this decision, uh, so maybe just the men, and, and I'm going to assume they probably never had to face this dilemma. That decision you had to make as to what you were going to do with your girlfriend who was pregnant and the child was not yours, like Joseph had to. Now, I assume that none of you men have had that, and if you have had that, then at least you've got someone in Joseph perhaps that you can uh, follow, but all of us have to make our own choices. Joseph's someone that we so often overlook. We overlook, uh, I think, to a large extent, what he must have been going through. Well, I think we overlook uh, his character and the implications of his character. Uh, the scripture tells us, uh, in the version that Janet read before, the NIV, um, it said because he was faithful to the law, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. The older NIV translation says because he was righteous, and that's what the Greek literally says. He was righteous. He was, a, he was someone who had a lot of integrity. He was someone with character. He was someone who was always looking to do what was right by others. <coughs> Yet... He was going to divorce her quietly, and that's not how actually God wanted things to play out. In Joseph, I think, we see something that's, I think, true of all Christians. 
all people who follow Jesus, I think it's true of all people in general, we, I would hope, but sometimes we make selfish decisions, but we, we hope that we make decisions for the sake of others like Joseph is. Joseph's trying to do the best thing he can by Mary because he had a few options to him that wouldn't have been as well as well as the divorce option. His first option that Joseph had was to have Mary stoned. According to the law, he could have had Mary stoned for being pregnant and not being his baby. His second option is to have her and her family return the dowry that he would have paid, which would have crippled Mary financially, but he would have at least been getting back what he deserved. And that dowry could have been repaid and then Mary would have had the option to uh, perhaps collect a dowry from whoever she was pregnant to um, or at least just live and um, go off with this um, man that she seems to have shacked up to. But the last option is the option that Joseph chooses which is to have her keep the dowry and he just divorces her quietly and lets things be. As far as Joseph could tell it was the most Passionate and caring option. But it wasn't God's option. And I wonder sometimes if we look at our life and we, um, we're always trying to do the best that we can and the best that we know without considering what the best that God can do. Joseph takes the option that makes life very difficult for him. Joseph takes the option that means that he's going to be ridiculed, be an outcast potentially. Because as far as all his family and friends are going to think, they're going to think one of two things. Either Joseph and Mary did the wrong thing, or Joseph has taken responsibility for a problem that is not of his own making and is bringing shame on his family as a result. And we know from other passages in the gospel that the family was spoken about. The joke was made, oh Jesus, the carpenter's son, yeah right. But as a result, Joseph gets to experience something amazing. He gets to bring up he gets to adopt a son of God and to raise him and to love him, to take care of him. And that's the option that God has before all of us every time we have the opportunity to look at what is the best decision we can make. Every time we're faced with a choice and we're using all of our wisdom, and so we should. But we can also go, what is the option that God would have me take? What is the choice that God would have me do in this circumstance? And there is opportunity and there is joy for us 
Yes, there's difficulty, but there's opportunity and there's joy for us in taking those choices. But there's one greater truth that we see in Joseph taking Mary home and adopting Jesus. And in that we see what God does for us. And that God makes the choice to adopt each and every one of us. That God says, even though this is actually going to be difficult, even though this is going to cost my son Jesus, even though there's going to be some scandal attached to my name because of the way that all Christian people, no exceptions, at times behave and act, God says, I'm going to adopt you. And so even though it's hard, even though sometimes we ignore him, even though sometimes we don't spend the time with our heavenly father just like we perhaps don't spend the time that we should with our earthly fathers and mothers, God still chooses to embrace us, to adopt us, and to give us everything that a child of God the riches of heaven, eternal life. The dad who is always looking out for us, loving us. This Christmas, may you know that just as Joseph adopted Jesus, God, your heavenly Father, has made you his child. He wants to raise you, to grow you, to help you, to nurture you, to teach you, to walk you, to bless you. May that be God's Christmas.